Sorry about that. I just started a video ahead of time. Hello, welcome back, my dark memes, and happy Thanksgiving, which is the title of this video. Shut up, you tablet chan! Not now! I need to. Really? A day after. A day before. Just quiet. Okay. Okay, as I was saying, yes, it's a video that I made yesterday for Thanksgiving. Did, did she do it again? For Thanksgiving. So, yeah, so this is Happy Thanksgiving. It's also called Hungry Howard, a creepy pasta episode. And this is by, nope, too creepy. So I will have a link to this video down below so you can watch it, hear it, watch it yourself. Down below so you know what is happening. And what else? Yes, and that's about it. So we get, hopefully my recording, I did test it out. It, I can hear the recording. Hopefully it won't just disappear with the recording. Whatever. But happy Thanksgiving to everybody. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Like I said, this is Hungry Howard by Nope Too Creepy. And yeah, hopefully he will announce the writer of this in the video. If he doesn't, uh, hopefully he has a link to that channel. To whoever wrote this. But whatever, congratulations. And I'm distracting. Oh, happy Thanksgiving. Let's go! Oh. Nope. <laughs> so, oh, so that's how it starts it off. Oh my gosh. Everyone loves a good story. After all, words can be an impossibly beautiful and fluid paint that splashes on the canvas of our imagination. True, but a oh my. storyteller can use their voice as a paintbrush using a different tone like an artist would use a different color. When the storyteller starts to paint you a personal picture only you can see, you'll have it with you forever. It's true. It's a gallery you can always stroll down and admire anytime. When you're in love, just gander at the Romeo and Juliet piece framed in tragedy. Appreciate the uh -huh. intense and romantic strokes the artist used to paint a love story. When life is vapid or lacking adventure, you can always let your eyes drink in the Treasure Island piece that boasts vibrant and exciting colors. And when you're feeling alone or vulnerable, I hope you think of a story my stepdad told me. I hope you think of Hungry Howard. Okay, now Most it's starting to get, people I get here. Stories Ooh. when they have a little bit of truth to them. I mean, that makes them more exciting, right? Kinda? That, that it actually could happen. Just that little dash of truth brings a pulse to the words you hear or read. Unless, of course, you're one of the main characters. <laughs> uh -huh. My dad died when I was young. Very young. I wasn't even sure how to wipe my own ass when he drowned. Well, a few too many beers on a fishing trip later, and my mom was a widow. She eventually met my stepdad and got married seven months later. Bryce was your typical try-hard replacement dad. He would always try to make an effort to bond with me when my mom was present, offering to throw the old pigskin around and other annoying shit. But when it was just he and I... Silence filled the room like smoke from 20 old dude cigars on poker night. Uh, huh, okay. It was a complete turnaround from how he acted in front of my mom. His voice was warm and a little too pleasant. He wore his voice in a way, the same way he wore his modest polo and jeans combo. Seriously, that's all the dude wore. Polo and jeans. Okay, now that's weird. The only thing that really stood out on him was his gold watch. Okay, not that weird. It was so beautiful and ornate that at one point I honestly thought it belonged to the Pope. <laughs> bad habit of losing it. He would often tear the house apart in a panic if it went missing. I remember one time I found it while he was throwing the couch cushions across the living room. What the heck? It was adorned with gold and rubies in a way that reminded me of a bleeding sky at sunset. Okay, I can see why he's listening. The watch was two letters. H. H. I walked up to Bryce and handed him the watch when he quickly snatched it away from me without so much as a thank you. 
I asked him what HH meant. He gave me a stern stare, but I could see amusement radiate behind his stoic gaze. Hungry Howard. Okay. Who's Howard? And why is he hungry? My ten-year-old self asked. Bryce let a smirk slither across his face. Hungry Howard is a monster, son. He lives in the woods just behind our house. Oh man, that's just... Monsters aren't real. Oh, yes. Yes, they are. Uh, the he voice. Said in a voice draped in darkness. What does he look like? Bryce stood silent for what felt like a solid 20 minutes. He has one giant hand and a mouth that's almost too big for his head. Do you want to know what he uses his giant hand for? Yeah. <laughs> Boy. He snatches up children who wander off alone near the woods. He said as he grabbed my shoulder with his right arm. Then he drags you, letting all the sticks and rocks cut your face and head back to his lair. Then he crushes you until you're nothing but red pudding with bits of bone sticking out. He uses his normal hand to pick pieces of you out of his giant hand and eats until he throws up. After he throws up, he keeps eating. His grip became so tight that I winced. A question sat in the back of my throat. I swallowed it. Why do you have his watch? <coughs> that was really the only time we talked when my mom wasn't in the same room. Oh, I'm sorry. Of course, I had nightmares about Hungry Howard for a few weeks. Oh, and sorry about that, guys. Course, I was too afraid to play in the backyard since it was right next to the woods. Mm. But eventually, I became a kid again and played in the backyard like all kids do. That is until one of the boys from my school went missing. Oh, here it begins. I just watched the news after dinner for an hour. One night, the newswoman talked about one of the kids I knew, AJ. He hadn't been at school for a couple of days, and I guess he hadn't been home for a few days either. Bryce turned the TV off right after the news story. He looked at me and smiled. Turn the chain! He whispered, Hungry Howard. Again, the nightmares came back. Uh, here we go. I wasn't afraid to go in the backyard. It was worse than that. I was curious. I stared at the wood line for a good 15 minutes before I stepped in. The trees towered over me, and I felt as if they were staring, telling me I wasn't welcomed in their home. I continued slowly through the woods and quickly got lost. <laughs> I wandered for what must have been hours before a smell bit me like a coiled snake. It was like rotting meat that sat in a dumpster through the heat of day. That's when I saw sheets draped over branches. Okay, that's not good. Like they used to be white, but were turning yellow with deep brown stains towards the bottom. Oh man, that's not good. The smell intensified with each step. Eventually, I had to put the collar of my shirt over my nose. Why would you keep moving? Almost drowned me. I heard sporadic and furious buzzing from inside. I gripped one edge of the crusty sheet and pulled open the makeshift tent. A cloud of flies rushed out, almost as if they were afraid of what was inside too. Once I was able to see what was inside, my stomach dropped. Rope loosely laid on a ground cake in brown crust. A large pile of meat was pushed to one corner and an assortment of blades were pushed to another. A large, oblong object sat neatly on a shitty wooden table. 
In the center of it all was a chair in the shape of a hand, covered in blood and chunks of meat. Oh, to it was a rusty sledgehammer. My eyes felt dry and heavy as they traveled to the thing on the table. Staring at me was a cartoonishly large mask. It was like a lumpy beach ball with stitching snaking its way all around. The eyes were dark and hollow, and the mouth looked like it was supposed to be smiling, but was uneven and stretched extremely taut at one corner. Oh. To the right of the mask was an apron and gardening gloves covered with the same brown crust. To the left was something shiny. I remember it shining despite the gentle warm haze the sun made as it shined through the sheet. Oh no. I instantly knew what it was. A watch. I picked it up and turned it upside down even though I knew what was going to be on the underside. Then why are you still here? Enough. H. H. I gripped it tight and turned around to run out of the tent before I saw another pile behind me. It was a pile of meat and hair that wore permanent grimaces. The heads were stacked without care or caution. And at the top of it all, AJ. I sprinted out of the tent and lost myself in the woods. I was running, but I didn't know where. Do you still have the watch? After an hour of running, I saw my home. I don't know why I ran in the house. Maybe it was adrenaline. Maybe it was because that's where I always felt safe. I ran in and the kitchen was torn apart. Bryce was digging through the drawers before he stopped and looked at me. His stare was stern and penetrating. His eyes moved down slightly. He smiled. Ah, I see you found my watch. <laughs> Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this special Thanksgiving bonus video. Hopefully, everybody is just as hungry as good old Howard. If you are, I'm going to need you to take a bite out of that like button down below. Also, since it is Thanksgiving, I want to give a huge thank you to all the subscribers. The channel has officially passed the 2000 mark, and I am ecstatic about that. Yeah, I'm more happy for, I'm happy for you. Announcement about the giveaway soon. Until then, stay safe out there. And happy Thanksgiving. Okay, before this begins, before that next one begins. Okay, well that was both well, here. Well, I guess it's a perfect time to say. Okay, that was creepy. That was creepy. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving, and well. <laughs> I'm I'm going to, I'm getting hungry actually because I haven't eaten. Don't you dare! I haven't eaten yet. This is after the other video, all right? Well, oh my gosh, that was pretty creepy. I like I said, I just love these storytellers. There's some that are monotone and just get you into the story, and then there's some that like a like, basically start talking and put their and put more uh, emphasis into the story. It makes me which. It makes you think I should try to at least like put up a store of creative pasta of my own one of these days, the, about anime and gaming just for fun, just to see how it works. But yeah, it was. It was hungry hard. Oh, is the kid alive? That's the question. Oh, yeah. but either way, yeah. This is nope. Too creepy. And to, uh, I guess he's the one that created this. I guess he's the one that creates his original content. I don't know. Maybe we'll have it on his links down below uh, at his channel. But here are all the different videos down below if you'd like to go and see what other videos are on this board right here. And yeah, I, I'm going to go and hopefully you enjoy today's Thanksgiving. I got to go and chase down Tablet Chan because she is running off right now. Tablet Chan, get back here! Tablet Chan! <laughs> bye bye see you later boss 
Jelly Chan! Oh! I swear, I... She messes me up every time. And I swear her big sister just waiting, just waiting to mess me up too. But whatever. I hope you enjoyed today's video and today's creepypasta episode. Well, Thanksgiving special. Congrats to... I don't know how long this has been. I don't know how many years it's been. But either way, congratulations to Mr. Nope Too Creepy. And yeah, like I said, I'll probably be doing more. And like I said, test it out. I think I know how to get rid of the no... Uh, thing glitch. I know I'm adding it's just I don't know how to end these kind of videos, but whatever Hope you enjoyed today's video Subscribe to join my dark memory and to hear more of these things I'll put in their own playlist sooner or later press the like button if you enjoyed it You will see this on Twitter and Also press the bell on the subscribers. So you'll be notified whenever my videos come up because YouTube channel doesn't bother and Yeah, share the video. That yeah, really helps me out and for right now my dark means Happy Thanksgiving! Dismissed!